Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Box Corel harmonizations. Today we're looking at O Gott His Geist, Mein Trost und Rat, which translates to O Holy Spirit, Counsel Sweet. This is another long corral. This is a two-pager, so even though the corral isn't particularly difficult to analyze, it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's just a lot of real estate, lots of page coverage. Um, so it's going to be a longer video, so uh, buckle your seatbelts. One sharp in the key signature, we start on G major, we end on G major here. So I reckon we are, let me move my microphone a little bit closer to me, uh, we are in the key of G major here. We then have C, C, G, and E. That is C major in root position, which is four, passing seventh in the tenor, before we get D, A, F sharp, and D. That's D major in root position, which is our five chord. And we have another passing seventh, this time in the melody. We then get E, E, G, and B, with a passing tone in the melody again as well. That is a six chord, E minor in root position, some adjacent harmony here. You could make an argument that this C is the chord tone, and this is actually um, C major over E, but they're functioning the same. I don't really think it makes too much of a difference. We then get B, uh, D, G, and D, which is G major in first inversion, 1-6, with a passing tone in the bass before we cadence on D major, D, D, F sharp, and A, which is our dominant, making this a half cadence. We then have a little phrase here, only four beats long, or I guess five beats long, because we have a dotted half note here, which is a, a perfect authentic cadence. The phrase actually is the cadence <laughs> in um, the key of D major. So I'm going to say that this G major chord here, G, D, G, and B, it's our tonic now. Um, but as soon as we shift over to the key of D major, it's now our subdominant. We then have E, E, G, and C sharp. That's C sharp diminished over E, which is 7, 6. And then we cadence on D major, D, A, F sharp, and D, which is our tonic triad. And this brief phrase, sort of functioning like another half cadence, we're just tonicizing the dominant here because we're immediately going to go right back to the key of G major, and we're going to call this D major chord, our five. We then have G, B, G, and D. It's our tonic triad, G major. C, C, G, and E. That's C major in root position, another four chord. B, D, G, and D. That's G major in first inversion, or one, six. Passing tone in the bass before we get D, D, F sharp, and A. That is our dominant, D major. Some passing tones in the upper voices. Kind of turns into a 1, 6, 4 chord, but not super impactful on the chord progression as a whole. We then have A, E, A, and C. That's A minor in root position, which is 2. Passing, a little brief passing tone here in the uh, tenor before we get C, which is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. We then have B, D, G, and B, which is an example of a two going to a one chord. Um, yeah, there's really no refuting this. We have five going to two going to one here, um, but I really feel like it's more like the bass talking here. Having a root position two chord go to a root position one chord is relatively, um, it's kind of unheard of, at least in the chorales. But yeah, two going to one is a relatively uncommon progression. It's not one that I encounter very often, at least the way that I analyze it. If you analyzed some of the progressions that I have uh, analyzed in the past differently, you'd say that two going to one is a relatively common progression, but I don't see it that way. But in this case, um, there's really no refuting it. Typically, we would expect some type of seven chord here going to one, but being preceded by five, we have a transitive progression that then goes to one. Typically, the five and the two are in each other's place. We have a passing tone in the bass here before we get D, D, F sharp, and A. That is our dominant D major, and our perfect authentic cadence in the key of G major concludes with G, B, D, and G. We also missed a passing seventh here in the tenor. Okay, looking ahead, we have what I'm calling a half cadence in the key of G major, but this C sharp right here might sway you towards the direction of in, uh, perfect authentic cadence in the key of D major. I just don't hear it that way. We have uh, G, B, D, and G, which is G major again, no need to reanalyze. F sharp, A, D, and A, which is D major over F sharp, that's 5, 6. Passing tone in the melody before we get E, E, G, 
and C. That's C major in first inversion, a bit of a deceptive progression here. Passing tone in the bass before we get G major in root position, G, D, G, and B. Whenever we have a 4-6 chord going to a 1 chord ascending, we typically get that leading tone connecting the 6 of the scale and the 1 of the scale. It's pretty consistent across all 4-6 to 1 ascending progressions. That is to say that the bass line is ascending. Um, we then have a passing tone in the tenor, passing tone in the melody as well, before we get G, B, G, and D, which is another tonic triad, no need to reanalyze. We then have A, C, F sharp, and D happening on beat 2 and. That's like a passing 5, 6, 4 chord, um, which would be kind of a normative progression because we immediately get a tonic triad afterwards, B, G, G, and D. G major and first inversion with a passing tone in the bass. We then get D, D, F sharp, and A. That's our dominant again, D major, with a passing seventh in the tenor. We then have E, B, E, and G, a deceptive progression. E minor is our six. A um, little ornamental or passing tone, whatever you want to call it, is uh, this A. It's not a chord tone. Before we get F sharp, A, D, and F sharp. Kind of doing similarly what we did earlier, 5, 4, 6 going to 1. Here we have 5 going to 6 going to 5, 6 with the passing tone in the bass before we get A, A, D, and E. This D is a 4, 3 suspension over the bass, but what's being implied is A major, which is 5 of 5. The C sharp resolves on the next beat, giving us our realized chord before we cadence on D major, D, F sharp, D, and D, which is, to me, it sounds like a half cadence, even though this is a half cadence that does not have the fifth of the chord in the melody, and it's being tonicized. It still feels like a, a G major to me. So this is a five chord D major. All right, looking ahead, we have an interesting cadence. We have a half cadence in the key of E minor. So we're looking for a point in which we modulate, and I don't think we modulate until after this interesting F natural here. We'll talk about it. It's probably the most interesting moment in the chorale. We have B, F sharp, uh, D, and D. That's B minor in root position, which is our three chord. Five going to three is a deceptive progression relatively common in the chorales. We then have E, G, E, and G, which is E minor in root position. That is our six chord. And I think you can analyze in E minor starting from here, but I feel like the analysis is a bit stronger and more accurate sound-wise if you analyze it later. We have D, D, F sharp, and A, which is D major in reposition, that's a five chord. And then we have G, D, G, and B, which is our tonic triad. Some passing tones in the upper voices. Uh, we have G, C, A, and C, kind of like an A minor seven chord, but again, not super impactful on the progression, so I'm not gonna analyze it on the page. We then have G, B, B, and D, similar to another five chord, but this passing F natural here, um, I guess along with this A natural, but this F natural makes me feel like this G is now functioning differently. I feel like this G is now a secondary dominant five of four. However, we don't get a resolution to, uh, we don't get a resolution to E minor, uh, sorry, C major, we get a resolution to E minor, E, G, B, and D. I guess more specifically E minor 7 right here. That would be our 6, 7 chord. And I think there is an argument to be made that this B and this D are both suspensions and they're actually going to resolve down by step. But that still really wouldn't um, explain what's going on here. So I think, well actually no, it kind of does explain what's going on here. Let's see, F sharp, C, um, B and D. Yeah, that still doesn't really explain it. So what I think is actually happening here is that this A minor chord, A, E, A, and C, which is our four chord, sorry, our two chord in the key of G major, six going to two is a good sign. If we look in the key of C major, right, we can call this G major chord our five and this resolution to A minor. That is to say that this A minor chord is actually our destination and these are just suspended tones, we can call this a 5-6. Um, we can call it a 5 going to a 6 in terms of C major, um, which is interesting. Sometimes we see deceptive progressions this way. Um, this technically 5 going to 
sorry, I meant to say five, going to three, seven. It would be another example of a deceptive progression in terms of C, because this F natural really makes this G feel like a dominant, and it should be resolving. And for the most part, it does resolve, except for instead of getting C in these voices, we get B and D, which enclose C. And I feel like Bach would have gone off on one of his contrapuntal schemes and um, elaborate chord um, concoctions. Um, but no, in this case, there's a bit of a secondary dominant deceptive progression going on here. And we've seen them, I think, in the first chorale we analyzed on the channel. Um, we had a deceptive progression via secondary dominant as well. If it wasn't the first, it was one of the first videos. So it's something that does happen from time to time. But this F natural also could be some modality in the chorales as well. We are moving to the key of E minor. And I don't think it's over the E minor chord. I think it's over this A minor chord, which I think becomes our four chord uh, because we get D sharp afterwards and the chord progression starts to move in the direction of E minor because of it, because this is functioning now as a leading tone. But whether or not these are both suspended voices, like, eh, no, I don't think they could be. We have a 4-3 suspension, no, we have a 7-6 suspension in the melody, but we have a 5-4 suspension in the, um, or, well, I guess it turns into, this would be now a, a tenth above the melody, and this would be now an octave above the melody, so with the bass changing, the suspension also changes, but neither of these tones are dissonances um, above the mel. I guess four three suspensions are relatively common, and they are treated that way because fours, in some contexts, are treated as dissonances. But a fifth over the bass doesn't really feel like a suspension as far as consonant tones are concerned. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a um, thought provoking progression, like what exactly is going on here. Those are a couple of theories of what I think is going on. I think ultimately the trajectory of this G7 chord is A minor, and the E minor chord is just a destination along the way. This F sharp is also a passing tone, but um, you could say that the E is also a deceptive progression in the same way that 5 going to 3 here is a deceptive progression. So, so long as 5 is not going to 1, it's pretty much a deceptive progression. Um, or if 5 is going to another stable tonic functioning chord, like 3 or 6, um, or like uh, the fact that it's going there in the bass. And the 7th of the chord does resolve down by step, so um, I feel like E minor might just be a substitute for C major because they are so similar to one another. Either way, it's a very interesting chordal moment. I don't know how to fully justify it, but those are a couple of different theories. Yes, so then we have uh, B, D sharp, G, and B. I think this G is an accented non-chord tone, and this is actually B major in root position, which is 5. We then have C, E, E, and A, which is A minor over C, which is 4, 6. Another one of these fi uh, 5 to 4, 6 progressions that we saw earlier. Um, 5 to 4, 6, it's like a deceptive progression again, before we get B, F sharp, D sharp, and B, which is our five chord. Okay, looking ahead, we have a perfect authentic cadence, not in the key of G, but rather in the key of D. And I think we modulate pretty much straight away. We have E, G, E, and B here, which is our tonic triad in the key of E minor. It also happens to be our supertonic in the key of E minor as well, uh, or sorry, D major as well. And we have a passing tone in the melody. We then have B, D, F sharp, and D, which is a secondary dominant. I guess we could make an argument that this is a six chord, but I feel like this G sharp is actually the more interesting tone here. This is G sharp B D, which is G sharp diminished in first inversion. That would be seven six of five because G sharp's the leading tone to A, and A is our dominant. And then we get A, C, A, and E. Actually, very interesting. A C A and E. I analyzed that as a five chord, but if that's the case, then maybe we are still in the key of E minor. So if that's the case, I'm actually going to revert my analysis here. We're going to stay in the key of E minor until we see something more, um, until we see something more uh, D 
major like. So after the 7, 6, a 4 chord, we have A minor, A, C, A, and E, which is our 4 chord. And then we have some passing tones in the lower voices before we get F sharp, A, A, and D, uh, which is D major over F sharp. We start to get G naturals again too. So this might be a 7, 6 chord in the key of um, E minor. And it might also be the place that we, mo yeah, this has to be the place where we modulate to the key of D major as well. Um, the 7, 6 now becomes our tonic. That's really interesting. In my notes, I had this marked as a C sharp. I'm glad that I caught that this time because that would have been something that s someone would have pointed that out in the comments. And I would have been very happy if they did, but I'm glad that I beat them to it. Um, yes, yeah, so the 7, 6 chord, 4 going to 7 is a good, a good sign because it's a normative progression. But typically the 7 that we expect in minor keys is um, diminished in quality because it's the leading tone 7th rather than the um, subtonic 7th. But here, the D, uh, the, um, the root of the chord is a byproduct of the melody, and Bach seldom modifies the, the melody to change the harmonic trajectory. It's the supporting voices that get added, right? So this is now our tonic. Um, we have some passing tones in the bass and alto before we get D major in root position, so we're just reversing course, or sorry, not reversing course, we are re-rotating the chord and turning it from first inversion to root position. Some more passing tones, this time in the inner voices before we get G, B, D, and B. That's G major in root position, passing seventh in the bass, passing tone in the tenor before we get E, G, E, and C sharp. At C sharp diminished over E, which is 7, 6, and then we cadence on D major, D, A, F sharp, and D, which is our tonic triad in root position. And this is where we move back to the key of G major for our next cadence, which is ended with a perfect authentic cadence in the key of uh, G major. So this D major chord is our 5 chord, and then we move immediately to G major, G, B, G, and D. That's our tonic triad. C, C, G, and E. That's C major in root position, which is 4. B, D, G, and B. Sorry, D. That's G major in first inversion, so 1, 6. Passing tone on the bass, we get D, D, F sharp, and A. It's D major in root position, that's our 5 chord. Passing tone in the melody, before we get E, G, E, and C. That's C major over E, which is 4, 6. Passing tone, remember this passing 7th, just like we saw it earlier. When we connect 4, 6 to 1 via an ascending bass line, that's very consistent in box corrals. We get G major in root position, G, G, D, and B, which is our tonic triad. This C is a non-chord tone. We then get D major, D, F sharp, D, and A, which is our 5 chord. And then we get G major, G, B, D, and G, which is our tonic triad. Okay, looking ahead, we have a phrase that crosses over to the next page, but our next cadence actually concludes, or our next phrase concludes with a cadence that I'm calling a perfect authentic cadence in the key of D major. So we're looking for a point on which we modulate, but I don't think we modulate until about 60% of the way through the phrase. So we're still in G major for the time being. G, B, D, and G is G major. We don't have to uh, reanalyze that. It's the same chord, same spelling. We then have D, F sharp, D, and A. It's D major in root position, which is our five chord. Passing tones in the melody and tenor. Just like earlier, we had a five chord that kind of felt like it, or we had a five chord that right here, um, when you add those passing tones, it kind of adds like a passing one, six, four chord, but I'm just calling them passing tones. I don't think we need to analyze the chord. We then get uh, A, oh, we have the same progression actually, A, A, C, and C, that is uh, C, uh, sorry, A minor in root position, which is our two chord, passing tone in the tenor, uh, or sorry, the alto as well, before we get E, G, E, and B. It's E minor in root position, which is a six chord. Um, with this, it also could be a four, six chord because of the C, if we heard that as the root of the chord, but they're both functioning the same. I don't really see the point in analyzing it. And then we have B, G, D, and D, which is our tonic triad in first inversion with passing tones in the bass and the alto. And now we've made it to the second page. 
Okay, let me just readjust my notes as well. Sorry. Uh, we then have D major in root position, D, D, F sharp, and D, which is our dominant. Neighbor tone in the bass, neighbor tone in the alto before we get D, D, F sharp, and A. This one's followed by C sharp, so we're not going to reanalyze it, but we will also call it our tonic triad in the key of D major. This is the second modulation, or yeah, this is the second modulation where we've gone to D via um, a chord that turns into D major as its tonic, which is interesting. Uh, we have a passing seventh in the bass and a passing tone in the alto before we get D, G, D, and G. Um, sorry, B, G, D, and G. That's G major in first inversion, or 4, 6. Passing tone in the bass before we get G, A, D, and F sharp. I reckon this G is an accented non-chord tone, and actually it's this F sharp right here that is our um, chord tone here. That's D major in first inversion, which is 1, 6. We then have G major in root position, G, B, D, and E. I'm so sorry, not G major in root position. We have E minor 7 over G. Uh, this is uh, 2, 6, 5. Bach loves 2, 6, 5 chords. We then have A, A, C sharp, and E, which is our dominant A major in root position, passing 7th in the tenor, and then we cadence on D major, D, F sharp, D, and D, which is our tonic in root position. Looking ahead, we have a longer phrase, and I'm sorry that the ending of this phrase made it onto this system right here. That's my fault when I went back and I should have proofread that and turned this into one system. But my engraving software thinks it knows best when it does not analyze the music. I do. Uh, but we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of G major, and I'm convinced that this entire phrase is in G major, starting with this D major chord, which is our five. We move to G major immediately afterwards, G, B, D, and D, which is our tonic triad, passing seventh in the bass before we get E, B, E, and G. That's E minor in root position, which is our sixth chord. This G is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. We then have D, D, F sharp, and A. That is our dominant D major with a passing seventh in the bass. B, D, G, and B. That's G major in first inversion, one, six passing tones in three of the voices. We have A, C, G, and C. It's kind of like a passing two chord, like a two seven chord, A minor, incomplete, but it's not really contributing too much to this progression, so I will leave it out. We then have G, B, G, and D. That's just taking our G major chord and putting it in root position, so we'll just change the figured bass. Neighboring seventh on the bass as well before we get G sharp on the other side. This A is also a delayed passing tone. Um, we have G sharp, E, B, and D. That's E7 over G sharp, which would be 5, 6, 5 of 2, because E is the dominant of A, and A is our supertonic, so 5, 6, 5 of 2. And that's exactly where it goes, A, E, A, and C. Another very interesting moment, typically in this situation where we have this leading tone that connects the sixth and the tonic of the scale, um, here, I would typically call this a 7-6 chord because we have a 2 chord going to a 1 chord. And really the only time where we have root position 2 chords going to a tonic chord in any context um, is when it's like preceded by its secondary dominant. So maybe these after all are two seven progressions that are just changed through one voice. Um, I still don't see them that way. But I think Bach is sort of playing with us because he knows that this uh, chord is easily malleable. You can turn it into a diminished chord very easily just by modifying one tone. So 5, 6, 5 of 2 is literally going to 2 because the 2 chord is afterwards, and that sort of takes precedence over what's on the other side of it. But I think it's also dual identities. It, 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 it's definitely sort of bifunctional in terms of where the what the chord wants to do. It's like two on one side and seven on the other side. They kind of overlap. But regardless, it's an interesting thing that has happened in a number of chorales so far, this uh, deceptive two slash seven. We then have B, G, B, and, uh, sorry, B, G, G, and B with a passing seventh in the alto. This is our tonic triad, uh, G major in first inversion. Before we get C, A, E, and A, that's A minor in first inversion, 2-6. 
We then get C sharp B flat E and E with an anticipation in the tenor. This is C sharp. Uh, it's like C sharp fully. Dim is it C sharp fully diminished? Uh, I mean, you could make the argument this is C sharp fully diminished seventh, which would be seven seven of five because C sharp is the leading tone to D and D is our five. But I'm actually going to make the argument that this B flat's just an expressive chromatic tone that's aiding in the. Um, tonicization of D, even though it's D major that we're getting here. I'm going to call this 5, 6 of 5 because we don't have the complete chord here. Um, I think that the G natural is much more important than having the E doubled here, which feels much more likely to um, explain why A would be the root of this chord rather than B flat being the seventh of this chord. Either way, there's a secondary dominant functioning chord here that precedes where it should go, D major, D, A, D, and F sharp, which is our five chord, and then our final chord of our cadence. Again, I'm sorry, it made it onto the last system. It should have been at the end here, uh, but this is G major, G, B, D, and G, which is our tonic triad and root position. Okay, looking ahead, we have something that I'm calling an imperfect authentic cadence, but I think there's an argument to be made that it's a plagal cadence as well, and you'll see why, and it's in the key of G major. We have D, D, F sharp, and A, which is D major, that's our five chord, and then we have G, D, G, and B, which is our tonic triad and root position G major, passing tone in the bass, passing tone in the tenor, passing tone in the melody, which gives us another one of these passing A minor 7 chords, but again, I don't really feel like it's contributing too much to the chord progression, so we're going to leave it out. We then have B, B, D, and G. That's G major over B. We'll just change the figured bass. No need to reiterate the Roman numeral. We then have some passing tones. in the. We have a passing 7th in the melody and a passing tone in the uh, tenor. Before we get C, G, D, and E. This D is a 9-8 suspension over the bass, but we know that a 4 chord is being implied here. This D is a passing tone. This B is like a neighboring 7th. We then have E, G, C, and E, which is C major over E. Again, just taking the chord and rotating it once. It's now in first inversion here, so we don't need to reiterate the Roman numeral. Then we have, a, this is a 4, 6 going to one progression ascending in the bass. So there's this leading tone that connects the 6 and the tonic of the scale, which is what makes this feel like an imperfect authentic cadence to me, because that leading tone is present. Even though there's like suspensions going on, it's almost like we have F sharp, C, and E, which is like a, a seven chord with this long suspended G here. But if you don't look at this F sharp as enough of a reason to call this an authentic cadence, because we cadence on our tonic, G, G, B, and D, um, you can call it a plagal cadence as well. I think they're both accurate labels for what's going on here, but this sounds like an authentic cadence to me. Um, and it's interesting because we, we have, we've had half cadences that have the root in the melody, which is uh, generally unusual for Bach. And here we have in what I'm calling an imperfect authentic cadence with the fifth of the chord in the melody, which is unusual for Bach as well. So two cadences that defy the um, chordal structure that we would expect them to present themselves in. But we have another short phrase here to cap off the chorale. It ends in a perfect authentic cadence in G major. But we start the phrase off with some secondary dominance. We have F sharp, A, D sharp, and A. That's D sharp diminished over F sharp, which is 7, 6 of 6, because D sharp is our leading tone to E, and E is our 6. And that's where it goes, E, G, E, and B. That's our 6 chord. We have some passing tones in the inner voices before we get B, D, G, and B. It's G major over B, which is 1, 6. This G is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it, but this C is not, so we will mark it as a passing tone. We then have D, D, G, and A. This G is a 4-3 suspension over the bass, but we know that 5 is being implied here because we get the resolution on the next beat, and then we cadence on G major, G, B, D, and G, which is our tonic triad in root position. And that is today's chorale. A really long chorale. There's just a lot of real estate on this one. But I think proportionately to like yesterday's chorale, or was it yesterday's chorale or the day before? I think it was not yesterday's chorale. It was the one the day before. That was very, very long. It was like almost a 50-minute video, which was 
you know, I did spend some time at particular points to talk about my thoughts on chords that needed justification or interesting harmonic moments that sort of broke the conventional understanding of, uh, or like some things that weren't normative progressions or whatever, but it still ended up being an absolutely massive video because there was a ton to talk about, but here, this, I think proportionate speaking, this is actually a relatively short video because we have a two-pager here, but it's still um, relatively short. I've had single pagers that have been this long. Uh, so, yeah, not too much to talk about. I think the most interesting point is this F natural here. Is this E Phrygian going on in the bass here, or is this a deceptive progression in terms of C major, but we're just seeing it in a secondary dominant function or context? or a secondary context, I guess, that involves a secondary dominant. Who knows? Anyone's guess is as good as mine, but I provided a couple of different outlooks on it. But other than that, if you're interested in following me along on this journey to analyze all of Bach's chorale harmonizations, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit the notification icon so you get a notification of when my daily upload goes live. I have hundreds of more chorales to analyze, so if you're looking for your daily dose of Bach or some daily analysis, this is definitely the place to be, and I would love to have you. Uh, but on that note, uh, thank you so much for watching the video and supporting the channel by doing so. It really means the world to me. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.